Okay, so in objective two, we're going to start solving systems of equations algebraically instead of graphically. And the first part of it is being able to solve a system of equations using substitution. And it's uh, generally pretty easy. So you can see in this picture, it's pretty dramatic, that uh, this chick lost her leg and she has substituted her leg with a, a prosthetic leg. And it actually looks kind of cool. It's got this like lace design on it. Anyway, it's a substitution. So um, let's work with some substitution that we've talked about before in terms of evaluating a function at a particular value. Whenever you go to evaluate something like f of h minus 1, you substitute h minus 1 in for x. And then you solve it, right? You, you simplify it. So I'm plugging h minus 1 in for x. 5 minus 2 times h minus 1. And now let's just simplify. I don't do anything on the left side. I just simplify the right side. So 5 minus 2h, then a negative 2 times a negative 1 is the part that most people miss here. That's a positive 2. Okay, and, uh, and then simplifying here, I get 7 minus 2h. And uh, there's the answer. I just substituted in h minus 1 in for x. That's the substitution property, okay? So in geometry, you call this thing the substitution property of equality, and you often used it in proofs as one of the reasons why you could do something. And what you were doing is, if two things were equal, if a was equal to b, you could take a out, and you could substitute b into its place for any expression or equation that had a in it or vice versa, right? You could take B out and stick A in its place because they were equal to each other, okay? And, and so this is one of the ways that we can solve a system of equations. We could take X out and we can put another expression in its place and get rid of one of the variables. So let's look at that on this next, oh, not this exercise. Let's actually look at this Foxtrot cartoon. Okay, so in this Foxtrot, um, comic strip here. There's Peter, and uh, he's he's confronting Paige there. He's trying to do her homework. Ah, I can't do these math problems. Why am I so stupid? And she says, if, she's quoting the problem here, if 2x plus y equals 60 and x plus 2y equals 75, solve for x and y. How the heck do I figure that out? And Peter responds, if two shirts and a sweater cost $60 and a shirt and two sweaters cost $75, what does each item cost? And she rattles off, the shirts are $15 and the sweaters are $30, duh. You aren't stupid, Paige, just weird. Come back, you still haven't told me how to solve the problem. So uh, here's kind of another way to look at substitution. Not, she had a problem and then Peter took the problem and substituted something into it uh, that was equal to it, just in a way that she would understand the problem, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, let's let's try some substitution on this exercise. Okay. So you only want to do substitution as a method to solving a system of equation if it's easy to do, if it's convenient to do. And you're going to know that if you have something like an x or a y that's kind of by itself that has has a leading coefficient of 1. And I can see that happening in this bottom equation. So if I solve this thing for y and get y by itself. So let's do that here. Let's uh, add the 2x's over and then I can see that y is equal to 2x plus 4. And I'm going to take that 2x plus 4 and I'm going to substitute it into the other equation. So let's substitute that in for y because it's equal to y into the top equation. Don't stick it into the original equation. We're going to look at in just a second what crazy thing happens when you substitute it into the same equation. But anyway, so this new top equation becomes 3x, right, right here, 3x plus 2 times, and then I'm taking y out and I'm substituting in 2x plus 4 in its place is equal to 1. Now look, there's no, there's no y's in it, so I can solve this equation for x and I get a value for x. So let's distribute here 3x plus 4x plus 8 equals 1. Add up my x's and I get 7 of them. Uh, go ahead and subtract that 8 over. Let's just do that in one step. That's a, a negative 7 
so I get an x value of negative 1. Okay, I'm not quite done yet. I need the y value. Remember, this is a point of intersection. I need a, an ordered pair x comma y. So we can substitute it in either the top equation or the bottom one, whichever one's going to be easiest. Well, since y is all by itself on the second equation, stick it in there. So here I get 2 times negative 1 plus 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So there's the y value, and your point of intersection is negative 1, 2. There's the solution. And this is, uh, using some vocabulary from the last, uh, last lesson, this is a consistent, independent, consistent system. Okay, so now let me uh, just take a step back here and let's just see what happens if I were to solve the second equation for y and instead of sticking it in a top equation, a common mistake is to stick it back into the same equation where it came from. Let's see what happens when I do that. So again, I solve this one for y and I get 2x plus 4. So let's take this 2x plus 4, stick it in for y into the same equation. Okay, so I have, bring this down here, a negative 2x plus, I'm taking this y out, sticking in 2x plus 4 in its place, equals 4. Now watch the crazy stuff that happens. The negative 2 and this positive 2x, they cancel out and I get 4 equals 4. What? Yeah, that's a true statement. As you're going to see in just a little bit, if I get a true statement like that, it means that you have infinitely many solutions. And so this could be a potentially confusing situation. You do that and you go, oh, that's a true statement. There must be infinitely many solutions. But there's not. Because so I can just see it back on this example. There's just one, negative 1, comma 2. Okay. So whenever I go to solve a system of equations by substitution, I only want to do it if it's easy and if it's convenient to do so. Right? I want to first solve one of the equations for one of the variables. That's step one. Solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Whichever one's easiest, solve it for either x or for y. Okay? Now I'm going to take this expression and substitute it in for that variable in the other equation. Okay? And that's going to get rid of that variable. And now I just have one, and I have to solve for that variable. I'm going to get a number. x equals 3, something like that. Okay, now I'm going to take that value and substitute that into one of the original equations, it doesn't matter which one, to get the second variable solution. Okay, and then finally you write your answer as an ordered pair. Okay, it's, it's pretty simple. Substitution is a pretty simple method to solve a system of equations. Okay, so I want you, on this exercise, to do what we just did. I want you to solve that system of equations by substitution. All right, let's see how you did, shall we? Okay, so it was more convenient to solve the second equation for x, because x has a leading coefficient of 1, so subtract 5y over. And then I would take that expression, negative 5y minus 9, and stick it in for x in the top equation, the other one. Remember, if I stick it into the same equation, I get nowhere. It's kind of like a dog chasing its own tail, round and around and around. Okay, so whenever I substitute that thing in there and simplify, I get y is equal to negative 2. I take the negative 2 and put it into one of the two original equations. The one that has x by itself is easiest. And I get x equals 1. Write that as an ordered pair, being careful to see which one comes first. The x comes first, 1 comma negative 2. Okay, so that concludes solving a system of equations algebraically by using the substitution method.